Are you one of those people who know their concepts really well but still are unable to solve 700 level questions? What do I mean? Just look at this question. Well, this is a hard official question, 700 level question that very few people get correct. Let me in fact show you the accuracy data here, the choices and the percentage of people that marked each choice. The correct answer here is choice D. So just about 30% people got this correct. So this clearly is an uber difficult question. But it's not just difficult because of the difficult concept it tests. What difficult concept? Well, well, the concept here in this question is solving a quadratic inequality. Watch the linked video here to learn how to master such inequalities. This is where I teach the wavy line method. So people who do not have the right conceptual knowledge, so across here, these people would mark one of the choices from the first three, A, B or C. So if anybody marks this, then that means the concept is not there. Watch the video and fix it first of all. Now of those who answer this question incorrectly, about 30% actually do know the concept, but they still falter. Why? Hi, I'm Shweta, I'm the lead quant SME at EG Mad, and in this video, I'm going to tell you just what happens that, that we miss a question despite knowing the concepts. After going through this video, you will not be one of those people who has concepts strongly built, but who still falters on such questions. Let's get started and by the end of the video, you'll be so well prepared that you will be able to answer this practice question that I'll be sharing at the end of the video. You will post your your answers in the comments and I'm going to read each of those. For now, let's get into the discussion mode and this is the question we talked about. So let's solve this together. So what do I have? How many integers, read the question carefully, how many integers that satisfy the inequality this? So there is an inequality. How many integers that satisfy this inequality are less than five? So first of all, I want the integers that satisfy this inequality. Then I just need to see how many of those integers are less than five. So really the less than five part will come later. I first have to be able to find these integers. Now such inequalities have been detailed, have been taught in detailed in another video I mentioned linked up again. This is the video where I teach the wavy line method that can help you solve any inequality with ease. So this video I'm not going to go into absolute detail. Watch that video. Now, while the wavy line thing is how you completely solve the inequality, the very first step you have to take is to simplify this inequality. This right now is rational, something in the numerator, something in the denominator. For this, I have another video linked up for you where I teach you just how to simplify such inequalities and get them into the form on which wavy line method will work. So watch this video as well. Right now, I'm going to do that for you. So we simplify this inequality by multiplying both sides of the inequality by the square of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by x minus 2 whole squared on both sides. Right side will stay 0. So left side after simplification is just going to be the product of these three things and this is x minus 2, one second, this whole thing greater than equal to 0. So this is the simplification bit. After this, what do we do for wavy line method? We draw a number line on which we plot the breakpoints. Breakpoints we get by putting each of these factors equal to 0 one by one. So you have negative 3, negative 2 and 2. I've just put them in order. How do we then draw the wave? We start from the top right hand corner and we draw the wave. Complete detail is in the video I mentioned. So this way you can easily draw the wave. Now, because you want this to be greater than or equal to zero, you look at the wave wherever it's above the number line. So where is it above the number line? It's here and here, two places I just highlighted. So let me write these down. The first interval is when you are between negative three and negative two right? And the second one is when your x is greater than or equal to 2. 
Now remember, my question was satisfy these inequality. Yes, satisfy. So I found those x's, but they also have to be less than five. So that really will have an impact on this second part of the solution, which just said greater than equal to two. Now I have an upper bound also. Otherwise, I could have taken everything greater than equal to two. So I will actually reduce this. The first range does not get impacted. These are anyway less than five. The second one becomes greater than equal to two, but less than five. Now, if you count all of the integers till this point, what all do you have? You will have negative three and negative two from the first range. From the second one, you're going to have two, three, and four because you're still going to stay less than five. So then, if I count all of these, how many integers do I have? I have five integers. So five is the correct answer. No, that. Is the trap choice? That is what I said. Thirty percent of all people who get this wrong mark this, and all of these people did everything till here perfectly well. That's why I said these are people who do know the concept, but they still falter. Why do they falter now? Is what we need to understand. Before we move on, tell me how are you enjoying the video so far? If you're enjoying it, hit the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel to make sure you do not miss out on such high-quality content. We constantly come out with these videos to completely help you in your journey. Along with this, our YouTube channel has a lot more to offer, a lot of journeys to share with you, success stories to motivate you. So check all of that out. For now, let's continue. What is the mistake that has happened here already? Well, when you simplified your inequality here at the first step, you got rid of the denominator, so that what you had was a simpler inequality to work with, right? But then, since originally in the inequality x minus two is in the denominator, there is an inbuilt constraint on it, something which will otherwise just just make your inequality itself. Undefined. What is it? I'm talking about x minus two being zero, because we are not allowed to have zero in the denominator of any number. Otherwise, it's a not defined number. So there is that inbuilt constraint that my x cannot be two. Otherwise, this rational inequality that the question gave us itself is not defined. That can't happen. So if x cannot be two, I had to reject that from this list that I wrote. You see, right now two is a part of the list, but this constraint here that I talked about should help you reject the two, and therefore the correct answer is not five. But four such integers. Essentially, you're just removing the two, and so the correct answer for this is choice D. Okay, so everything correct with the concepts, but at the end, be mindful of such constraints. Getting rid of them in the process of simplification that can lead to you losing sight of them. You know, forgetting that something like that ever existed. But it did exist, so you have to be very careful when you are doing such simplification to write down the constraint at the beginning only. Don't come to this at the end. You know, we had to right now do it at the end. I had to show the flow to you of what happens if you're not careful. But next time you do this, write down the constraint at the very beginning so that whatever you get at the end, you remember to check the constraint one more time. Okay, so let's summarize everything that we learned here through a set of takeaways. Let's see. So you know when you have rational inequalities, you simplify them by multiplying by the square of the denominator. But this is not where you stop. Don't just stop after the simplification. Make sure that you write down the constraint that is imposed by this, by this denominator that you just so easily multiplied by this denominator not being zero. So there always will be a constraint 
coming by this little fact here okay so keep all of these things in mind watch the videos i talked about to build the concepts first then do the practice question that i have here for you this is the question now what do i want in the comments just put your answers all you need to do is write down a single number which is how many integers that satisfy this inequality are greater than negative nine. You don't have to write down the full list of all integers, but if you do, it's better. So let's just set that format. So you're gonna write answer, and you will write first of all whatever number of integers it is say i'm not taking any of the choices so that you don't take any hint out of it say you write eight as the number of integers and then make a dash then in parentheses you put down your eight integers separated by commas okay this is the format we'll use all of you put your answers in the comments i'm going to read each comment come back and respond wherever i see a mistake or give you kudos if you get that correct I'll see you again in another video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this one and click on the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any more such videos. Happy learning.